An exoplanet is a planet outside of our solar system. They are planets that orbit their own stars. First exoplanet was detected in 1992, but we know that people speculated of their existence way before it was first confirmed. Isaac Newton speculated that they existed back in the 18th century. And in 1952, Otto Struve proposed two working methods for detecting exoplanets, the transit and the wobble method. Now that was 40 years before the first exoplanet detected. Right now, there are many methods that could be used to detect them. A method that is used a lot is done through transits, meaning the exoplanet is detected when it happens to be in front of its star. When it is in front, it causes the star to get slightly dimmer from our perspective, since it blocks out some of the light coming from the star. And with right instruments, we can detect that difference in luminosity caused from the planet being in front and conclude that the exoplanet is there. Now we also have another method which is just directly taking images of exoplanets. For that to be done, we have to detect their thermal emissions with infrared cameras. In this image, we can see thermal emissions coming from three planets that are orbiting a star called HR 8799. Thermal emissions coming from the star are as you can see blocked out so that we can see emissions from planets themselves. Now what we are looking at in this image is not in real time. It is actually how these planets looked like 129 years in the past. The reason for that is because electromagnetic radiation is traveling at the speed of light and it needs 129 years to reach us. Pretty much everything beyond the solar system, that is other stars and exoplanets, are light years away from us. Even the closest star system to ours, which is Alpha Centauri, is 4 light years away from us. So because the speed of light needs years to reach us from those places, when we look at the clear night sky, what we are seeing is how the universe was many years in the past. So with this knowledge, it should be pretty clear that cosmic distances beyond the solar system are huge, meaning that colonization of exoplanets throughout the entire Milky Way galaxy is going to be very slow. Now actually, the most efficient way of conquering these great distances between stars in order to colonize the Milky Way would not be with humans. The fastest way of doing that would be to create von Neumann probes. They are self-replicating probes that were conceived by a mathematician, John von Neumann. So if we can send a single self-replicating spacecraft to a near planetary system, when that probe reaches that system, it could extract materials from those planets and asteroids in order to create replicas of itself. Of course, it would need to have artificial intelligence in order to achieve all of that. Then those probes could go on to create even more replicas so that they could colonize other star systems. It is called exponential growth. As you get an increase in the number of self-replicating probes, then that number will just continue to increase at a faster and faster rate. It builds upon itself. It is comparable to the snowball effect. If these machines are able to achieve 10% the speed of light with these engines of the future, then considering the nature of exponential growth, these probes should be able to populate the entire Milky Way galaxy within 10 million years. It is likely possible that these probes can be created with advanced enough technology. Even right now we can see big advances in 3D printing and artificial intelligence. In the near or far future, it is not even crazy to imagine that we could have these machines which would have the ability to colonize the galaxy and stream data from the locations they go to back to us here on Earth. Now these probes would not only have the ability to create replicas of themselves, they would also be able to create large structures that would help the operation of gathering materials in order to create replicas. And they could also have the ability to terraform exoplanets for our use, which means they would be able to manipulate exoplanets to make the conditions on them more Earth-like. These probes would then also fit criteria for the definition of life, such as the ability to reproduce and adapt. Sort of like viruses in many regards, but unlike viruses, these probes would be able to directly respond to stimuli, while viruses in isolated environments do not respond to stimuli. So really, in a sense, we could consider these probes to be just a different form of life at that point. Since they even fit the criteria for life, 
better than viruses. Now, if these probes travel at 10% the speed of light, that means that if they come in contact with even small particles, that could potentially do damage since they would collide at such a high velocity. They would need to be made out of a material that can withstand such great damage. The probes would also still probably need to repair themselves if the collisions are sufficiently impactful. Now, it is also possible that these probes could then go on to colonize other galaxies. But one serious problem that they would face is getting enough energy. They wouldn't be able to just stop at a near planetary system to get everything they need in order to continue traveling. Distances between galaxies are way bigger than the distances between stars, obviously. Now, if these probes somehow find a way to have enough energy to travel between galaxies, then they would technically be able to colonize a huge chunk of the universe. They just wouldn't be able to colonize the far out galaxies. Galaxies that move further away from us than 10% the speed of light. These probes then wouldn't be able to reach them unless they find a way to increase the speed that they are traveling at. Alright, so clearly colonizing the galaxy with these probably possible probes could be possible. But could we humans achieve the same thing too? Let's say that a great catastrophe happened on Earth in the far future, be it man-made or something caused by nature. That would be a great incentive for humans to leave this planet. And there are a ton of hypothetical ways of doing that. One of the scenarios in which humans should be able to colonize the galaxy that doesn't seem too far-fetched is a scenario in which we utilize hibernation for spacecrafts with humans in order to colonize other close exoplanets and potentially the entire galaxy. Alright, so here's how it could be done. Right now we know how to put humans in a state of hibernation in a safe way. We do that with a technique called therapeutic hypothermia. What we do is we lower the temperature of the human body so that the metabolism decreases. Then the human falls unconscious. But we decrease the temperature of the body just at the right level so that they are not dead. So far there weren't any serious problems with doing this. Now, if we have anti-aging technology and we combine it with this hibernation technique in order to enhance the ability of the human organism to survive for long periods of time needed to travel between stars, then in that case we wouldn't even need to have engines that propel us at 10% the speed of light at all, which would make things a lot simpler as we wouldn't get all the problems that come with going that fast. And we wouldn't need to go that fast because from the point of view of the human inside that ship, the difference between a single year and a thousand years would not be apparent at all. Since they would be in a state of hibernation, from their point of view, they would be able to travel between different star systems in a time span that seems to be like a blink of an eye. These spacecrafts would not need to be that large and would not need to be too complex compared to spacecrafts that have conscious humans in them. So in these spacecrafts inside which humans hibernate, their bodies would receive everything needed in order to survive for very long periods of time. Then we could send that spaceship to another star system. When they reach that system, with the tech available, which I am assuming is more advanced than what we have now, they should be able to create colonies that are completely sustainable on their own. And then they should also be able to create even more spaceships like the ones they were in and send them to other star systems with planets. And over a very long period of time, possibly billions of years, humans would be able to colonize the entire Milky Way galaxy. Now, we can also combine this scenario with von Neumann probes. Because von Neumann probes are hypothetically capable of doing the things they do, they should also be capable of terraforming other planets. So before we even reach those planets with our spaceships with humans, we could send von Neumann probes to terraform the planets humans are going to reach in order to make colonization more feasible. If this happens, who knows what else could also happen. Possibly factions and territories would form, just like they do on Earth. And there could be wars between different parts of the Milky Way galaxy. But it's also possible that at that point, humans would be beyond that. These humans could create Dyson spheres around stars and they would have more than enough energy to sustain their life. Dyson spheres are megastructures created around a star. The Dyson sphere captures a large portion of the power output coming from the star. With that, we would be able to gather a lot of energy. 
It's also very much possible that at that point humans become masters of editing their genes. We could use that in order to make humans that reach those planets more capable of adapting to the conditions of those planets. Even if those exoplanets are terraformed, that technology could still be useful in many other ways. So what that could do is pretty much create different species of humans throughout the galaxy. In fact, that could even happen without gene editing at all. Naturally, humans from different regions of the galaxy would evolve in different ways over the course of billions of years. So then, we would have a galaxy that is colonized by different subspecies of humans. Because at that point in the future, it would be hard to even call them humans, as they would be so much different compared to us now. They would be something else. Now, oddly enough, communication between colonies that are in different star systems would still be very much slow. One message would need to travel for many years in order to reach a colony in another star system, since the distances are light years long. So those colonies on those exoplanets would still be somewhat isolated. But it's also possible that by that point, those species of humans would know how to create warp drives, which would allow them to travel at more than 100 times the speed of light. For that effect to happen, we would need to construct a warp field that would surround the ship and would warp space in a specific way, which would make the space behind the ship expand while space in front would contract. That in turn could propel the ship forwards at a speed that is faster than the speed of light. Now, the reason it is sort of questionable as to whether or not the warp drive is even possible at all is because we have no idea how to create a negative energy that is needed in order to construct that warp field. It is entirely possible that there would be some laws of physics that would ultimately prevent the warp drive from being functional at all. But if these future species of humans do somehow create the warp drive which is functional, that would make every civilization in the galaxy a lot more connected. And humans would then have the potential to colonize the entire observable universe. Even galaxies that move further away from us than the speed of light would then be reachable. And at that point, we would then finally be able to answer the question of whether or not there truly are other alien civilizations in the universe. Now, the colonization of the Milky Way galaxy has a lot less hurdles than the warp drive, so the warp drive would be likely something that would come after the colonization of the Milky Way, if it even is possible. As we can see, there are scenarios in which humans are able to colonize the Milky Way galaxy and the directions this colonization could go into are nearly endless. It's pretty much impossible to predict with any certainty whatsoever as to what is going to happen. What I talked about here are merely just hypothetical scenarios. In a sense, they are a possibility of the future. 